This is uh, Jamie doing a, a vlog, not done one in about oh, half a year. More, no, way more than that. Like eight months, maybe. A long time, last end of last summer. So I'm back on a bike. And it's not my uh, Yamaha. It is a Kimco KR125 Sport. Which is a 125 I have bought. For the time being until I pass my big bike test. And my Yamaha's waiting in the garage for me. So yeah, and I've decided for my first vlog in, a, in about 8 months, I'll start with doing a review of this Kimco KR125 Sport. I've had it for about a month and a half maybe now. I've actually had it quite a wee while, I've just not told you guys about it. We've not really done it. But yeah, I've got everything noted down. I've got pros and cons, because I did the when I did the Yamaha YBR 125, what that 125 review. That got some good people quite like that. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna do a Kimco KR 125 review, and it's a bit more organised now. I've got everything wrote, written down. I've got the pros and the cons to this bike, uh, and there's the the pros outweigh the cons massively. By the way, just to let you know, this is a really really good 125 sort of sports bike. Okay, so I'm going to start with this review by saying what the pros are. First thing I've got noted down here, speed. Which is, I guess, is a pro. It's not bad at all. Uh, wait a minute. Yeah, speed. It does about, what I've had at this 1 to 5, it's um, 74 is the most I've had out of it. Um, down a hill, albeit. But you know, I can get, I could probably get just 70 on a flat, which is pretty good for a little one to five cc engine. Um, it's only got, ah, it's only got 13 brake horsepower. It doesn't have the full 15. So if I had like 15 brake horsepower, it'd be really, really quick. So yeah, speed is, speed's pretty good for this, um, for the Kimco. Right, what else have I got noted down? Speed, uh, price, yeah, price. Because this is a Kimco, and it's Taiwanese, and it's not like a Honda or anything Japanese, it's a lot cheaper than any of its sort of Japanese competitors. Oops. So, it is a lot cheaper than like a CBR. Like this second hand I bought for a grand. A two, it's a 57 plate. Um, if you had to buy a 57 plate CBR 125, you'd probably be looking at at least a grand and a half. And, and to be honest, I think this is as good as a CBR. Pretty much, it's yeah, it's, it's pretty much the same as a CBR. And it's a lot, lot cheaper because it's under Kimco which is Taiwanese and it's not Japanese but to be honest I think it's it's built like a Japanese bike it's not like it's everything's pretty sturdy on it nothing's flimsy like like the Japanese crap you can buy so yeah build quality and stuff is good on this I've not had any problems uh, so yeah price is cheap and it's 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 like a, a CBR if not better than a CBR right what else so that's price, it's a good, it's good, it's affordable, you know. Style, yeah, I like the style because it's, it's styled like a bigger bike, but it's got a small engine in it. So if you're wanting to do, damn it, move. Anyway, yeah, that idiot. Styled, it's styled um, like a bigger bike. So if you're wanting to do like your bike test, um, yeah. So you do your bike test. Oh, I'm tired today, guys. I'm sorry. You do your bike test. You want to do your bike test, but you haven't got a bigger bike. If you buy one of this, this is like having a bigger bike, but you're allowed to to ride it. So it gets you used to what a big bike is like. This is like the size of a 250 bike, which is what a lot of people buy when they when they pass their bike test at 250. 
So it is still like a big bike, it's got a small engine in it. Um, so that's good. That's good if you're if you're looking to do your big bike test. I haven't got a big bike, this is like your like the in-between stage. This is like a big bike, but you can ride it on a CBT. Um, and I like how it's styled, it's a sporty style and stuff, you know. Um, I've not had a sports bike before, so this is the first one, and I like it. It's really, it's got full fairing on it. It's black and red. It looks a bit like a CBR, actually. It looks a bit like a CBR, but it's a lot, the thing is, it's a lot bigger than a CBR. Um, yeah, it's a lot wider. If you compare a CBR and this, the, this is like a good couple inches wider, and the back tyre is like the tyre off of a big bike. It's pretty big. Um, so yeah, like the style's good if you like sports bikes, that is, I guess. It's a, it's a big sturdy bike. Um, weight, is that? Weight, oh well. See, the thing with the weight, the weight is a good thing and a bad thing, I guess. The weight, it's 140 kilos without any fuel or oil or anything in it, and it's got a 13 litre tank and like a litre foil, so it's pretty much 155 odd kilos. Roughly 100, 154 or whatever, there's a guy on the bike. Um, so the thing is, it's good because it's heavy, because it gets you used to, eh, it gets you used to like what a big bike weight is and how it handles and stuff. So that's good, I guess, but it's also bad if you're like, if you're not like particularly strong, or if you're not wanting to, if you're not wanting to like get a bigger bike or anything. You're, if you're just happy having a one two five, a lot of one two fives are pretty light, whereas this is heavier. If you know what I mean, so it can help you or it could go against you. The weight issue. So yeah. Uh, and the last pros, last thing under the pro list I've got is ride comfort. Um, I was out today, Andy gave me directions to somewhere which was completely the wrong place where he was meaning to take me. He gave me the wrong directions basically and I got like lost kind of. And the ride comfort for this is I think it's really really good for a sports bike. It's not like you're, it's more like a, like a touring Oh, it's not really. T it's a sports touring position. It's not like full-on sports bike, but it's not just like a, a tour. It's, well, it's a sports tour then, really, isn't it? But it's yeah. Basically, the point I'm trying to make is it's really comfy. Um, I was out for like an hour today on it straight, pretty much an hour, or maybe a bit more, maybe about an hour and a half straight. And I could have done like another hour and a half on it. It was. It's pretty comfy. Not pretty comfy, it's really comfy. Um, yeah, so it's, yeah, it's comfortable. It's not like you get a sore back or anything or it hurts your wrists like a lot of sports bike do. There's a guy. Um, yeah, so that's the uh, the pros list done. Now, the con list that I've got, like all the bad points, they're not particularly majorly bad points. Um, these are just like, a few of the rough things which I guess you could put under as bad, but they're really they're not that bad at all. Like the first one, fuel economy. Um, this is how it's got. This has got like a 13 litre fuel tank, and I can get I can get roughly about 180 miles on one tank, which is like 60 mpg roughly, I think. And you might think 60 mpg for a 125 isn't great, I know it's not that great, but the thing is, because it's a sports bike, and I've never really had a sports bike before, I'm just gunning it about everywhere, I just like, you know, like now, like now, you know, because I'm just, I like, I'll rev it quite high, see if I kept the revs lower, and, you know, didn't do it, didn't, you know, throttle, put the throttle on as much, you know, I could maybe get 200 miles per tank, instead of 180. So, yeah. I mean, it's this breeding style that comes down to it. I'm quite, I like, I'm kind of aggressive with that a wee bit. I'm not, not sure if I should be like that. But that's just how I ride. And because this review is going on longer than I expected, I'm going to take a longer route home to continue this review, because normally I would turn up this left here 
and I'll go home, but I'm gonna go another way home, which takes slightly longer. So I can finish this off. Um, brand name, that's that's not even, well, it's a con. That, this is another con, brand name. There's only three cons that I can think of. First one was fuel economy, which is just purely down to your riding style. If you wanted, you can make that 180 miles go further if you want. It's just down, down to how you ride it. The um, brand name, how it's under is Kimco. People think, ah, oh, Kimco. It's probably, you know, it's Taiwanese, it's a load of crap, but it's just going to fall apart. People don't realise it's... I don't know, people think it's going to be, like, Kimco. People think that's bad. It's not really that bad. I had a Kimco scooter, a wee Kimco Agility 50. And that was, like, that was a great wee scooter. Didn't have any problems with it at all. Most people go for Japanese, which, yeah, you probably should do that, but, I mean, Kimco is pretty much the same quality as, like, Japanese bikes. Like, the t like Kimco brand, how it's Taiwanese, that's the same. I would say it's pretty much the same as Japanese brand quality. Like a Honda or Kawasaki or whatever. So that's not really a, it's not really a con, it's a kind of a con on Kimco's, on Kimco's, um, sort of, part, because that way, at least, least yeah, not as many people will be buying their bikes because they're thinking they're crap, whereas they're actually the same quality as the Japanese bike. So that's a shame on Kimco, really. If you buy a Kimco, then you're clever in a way, because you realise that they're good. And you don't have to spend as much money buying a Japanese bike for what would be the same quality, pretty much.